Tonight on Panorama. The crime that ruins the places we love. Pick that up! Pick up the stuff! There are more than a million incidents of fly tipping a year in the UK. We need to do something, otherwise this country is just going to be one huge skip. We show how ordinary people are fighting back. Ladies and gentlemen of Facebook Live, here's the two cretins that have been dumping all the in my fields. And we investigate how licensed waste collectors are cashing in. 100, 110. 120. So huh. This is our rubbish. It was supposed to be taken away, put somewhere safe, dealt with properly. And it's just been fly tipped. Welcome to Rubbish Dump Britain. This road was built in the 1990s but was never open to cars. So fly tippers have been using it as a dumping ground for years. Look at this place. Tons and tons of illegal waste. It is shocking to see up close. It just goes on and on. And this place captures a problem faced by many communities. Fly tipping, illegal waste, out of control. No traffic, but a gridlock of rubbish. The remains of cannabis farms, asbestos, lots and lots of glass, old beauty parlour here with hairdressers, chairs and and alike, we've had hoardings from businesses, we have... Brian Miles uh, lives nearby and has had enough. It breaks your heart. It make, it, it affects your quality of life. It's got progressively, progressively worse. Newport City Council says it's taking action and some prosecutions are pending. The people who actually came and dumped this, what do you think of them? It's very difficult to put into words in a calm manner. You know, it, I, th I really think they, they're hateful. They have no respect for other people, for the environment. They don't care what it costs to put right. They don't care what damage they, they cause. And I, I just despair with the whole situation. I really do despair. Fly tippers can face big fines and jail sentences. But that rarely happens, and it certainly doesn't stop them. The last figures up to March of last year show there were nearly a million cases in England alone. Flight of is definitely a scandal at the moment. It's absolutely, totally unacceptable. I think zero is the only acceptable level of fly tipping. No level is acceptable, and the rates we're at now is just ridiculous. <laughs> Drive around the UK and you will soon see the evidence. It looks like the rope has, has just been tied to this metal gate so that the van could drive off and this would be dragged out the back. It uh, suggests they do it a lot. We walk quite a bit and uh, it's unusual not to see any fly tipping, to be honest. Some criminals fly tip because it can be costly to get rid of waste properly. Others do it because it's easier than taking it to the dump. 
Local councils are responsible for dealing with fly tippers, but they can't keep up. Some, like Hertfordshire, say it's got worse since the pandemic. Because of COVID, we think we've seen a 50% increase. Now, is that because more people are at home generating more waste? At the end of the day, there is more fly tipping, which means there's more cost. And clearly, that's, that's money we can't spend on other public services. We all see fly tipping around where we live. And some people have been filming the evidence. No. This happened on a quiet street last July. Here, pal, why are you fly tipping? In January, this fly tipper was caught by a passerby. Pick it up. Pick it up. Yeah. Right. Put it back in, man. He makes him clean up. Why, why are you fly tipping then? If you don't want to be recorded, don't fly tip. Pick that up! Pick up the stuff! Pick the stuff up! Back in September, this walker found two men fly tipping. Take it away! Good bloke! What a nice The fly tippers man. weren't happy to be told to clear up. Well done! Very well done! This man was later fined for assault and criminal damage. So these are the screens that show what's going on there? Exactly. So 18 seconds ago, lots of bags and car parts. We've got household waste today, um, fridge freezer. Some really trying to fight back. This kind of smaller tip of kind of household waste, is that, is that the norm? Um, that's about 80% of it, and then you'll get 20% that you, really raises your eyebrows, which is huge amounts of tyres, huge amounts of fridges, sofas, mattresses, asbestos. Martin Montague has always hated fly tipping. A lucrative business deal meant he had the time and money to do something about it. He designed an app that helps people report incidents directly to local councils. I just want it to help clean the country up. I want it to help raise awareness with consumers, with councils and with government. And I want a simple way for people to be able to fight back, to submit evidence. Martin also travels the country investigating and confronting fly tippers. Another day, another load of fly tipping dumped in the countryside. Concrete, building waste for moving tip truck. This public road was blocked with building materials. I'm just having a dig through just to see if there's any evidence around. Just taking some drone footage. I'm going to post it up on the internet locally, the local news, and we got invoices. So um, we're going to see if we can shame the builders, find out who owns it. Thousands of people are soon viewing the images. This guy will think twice before he does this again. Someone puts Martin in direct contact with the fly tippers. They agree to clean it up if he takes down the post on social media. Just look at this. Martin has a night vision camera and he hides in a nearby field to make sure they do as they promised. Sure, it's a van. I'm going right to ground. I think this is our guys. Yeah, it's a tipper truck. You 
this is fly tipping in reverse. It's great for the taxpayer, but I just still can't believe it's actually happening. Someone's got a torch, I've got to lay down. The fly tippers spot Martin. He has to run to safety. I've got to go. I honestly thought that I was in danger that night. There were at least one dog chasing me and about four or five people at one point. Why would you take all that risk? Why would you get so involved? Because I hate it. More needs to be done. There needs to be more proactive fining. The councils aren't using those powers effectively for whatever reason you do fly tipping and most people get away with it it's true that most fly tippers are never challenged dig into the figures and it starts to feel like a national scandal They show there's only one prosecution for every 300 fly tipping incidents. And in some parts of the country, no one gets punished at all. More than half the councils in England didn't prosecute a single fly tipper. For virtually all offenders, it's the crime that goes unpunished. Councils have been given new powers to tackle fly tippers, but gathering evidence can be time consuming and expensive. Ultimately, you cannot be guaranteed, even if you are successful in prosecuting someone, that you'll get your full cost recovered. A recent example of taking the defendant to court, by the time the defendant actually got there, the, the local authority time, the police time, you're talking about £1,500 to £2,000 worth of cost, and the fine was £170. Councils are really strapped for cash. They're prioritising things like social care. It's not surprising that fly tipping just doesn't get in there. So here it is then? Yeah, and this is all the, the tyres we've had dumped. The true picture is actually much worse than the official figures suggest. Because hundreds of thousands of cases are not recorded. As soon as it crosses that fence, it's our, our responsibility and we've got to we've got to pay to have it removed. Waste tipped on private land is not counted in the government statistics and it's down to the landowner to pay to clear the dumped rubbish away. It's at least once a week. It ranges from somebody just chucking something out of their car boot to fridges, freezers, sofas, stuff like this, commercial waste. This was reported to us by a, by a tenant of ours, I think on maybe the 22nd of December. If criminals know they can get away with it, they'll dump anything. It was blocked at the time, it was blocking the lane. Like these barrels of what seem like oil, paint, and chemicals. I don't know what else is in them, but you can see that they are full of, full of horrible of liquid. And it was flowing down, flowing down the lane into a watercourse at the bottom. Oh, so there's, there's a stream at the bottom? Yeah. Because it's a public road, the local council had to pay to clean this up. It's terrible, isn't it? You know, you try, well, we do look after the countryside as much as we can, and then you get this happen. Um, you know, but what can you do about it? What do you think of the people who come and do this? Well, scum of the earth, basically. Yeah. Mm. 
Research suggests the average cost to a landowner is £800 an incident, with two-thirds of farmers saying they're affected. It's not surprising. Some get angry. Ladies and gentlemen of Facebook Live, here's the two cretins that have been dumping all the in my fields. In August, this farmer made two fly tippers take away what they dumped. Bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, all this has been dumped in the gate of the field. All right, goodbye, guys. Somebody's put these tires here overnight. Luckily, we've found out who, um, who's forgot them, so we're going to take them back to the person who put them here. Thank you. That same month, this farmer took the law into his own hands. Fantastic. He dumped the tires on the drive of the man he says flighted them. Hold it! Hold it! I got it to 421, but there might be a bit more. The alleged fly tipper has since moved away. That's what you get, hey. So, the crime is going largely unpunished by local councils. Who else is trying to protect our countryside? Well, it's the Environment Agency's job to tackle serious waste crime and they oversee a new unit to serve the whole of the UK. The creation of the Joint Unit for Waste Crime has been one major step in dealing with waste crime. It's there to deal with the more serious and organised element of waste crime, specifically those criminals that are involved in other areas of criminality. This is the sort of crime they'll be looking at the large-scale burning of dumped rubbish. Burning this type of stuff, I'm sure there are rules and regulations against it. This was caught on camera by a passerby. Can you explain to me why the, you're burning plastics? It's all commercial waste, I can see it. Keep it on me, mate. Yeah, I'll keep it on you. What? what? Yeah. Keep it on me, yeah? yeah? Who are you, Bob? Eh? Who are you, geese? Yeah. What? Yeah. I'm just asking Keep why you're burning f***ing plastic. Plastic We found a similar story here. An estimated 4,000 tonnes of rubbish have been dumped in a field. It's now being illegally burned. We've been here for a few hours and the burning has never stopped. It looks like that's just waste being burned in an open field. Now, there's loads of rubbish over there and while we've been here, a truck arrived with yet more. It looks like an illegal dump. It's just burning waste out in the open. Now, locals say this is a situation that's been going on for years and they have complained, but nothing's been done. What, what do you think of that? Outrageous, absolutely outrageous. There's no way that any local authority, any environment agency office would approve of that behaviour. Why? Because it's illegal. You know, just stuff going straight into that atmosphere. Who knows what's on that fire? Who knows what pollution's been caused by that? And how does that make you feel? Frustrated. Frustrated and disappointed. The burning has been going on for years. There have been 189 complaints, but the Environment Agency hasn't stopped what's going on. They just burn waste in a field, and 
Nearly 200 people have complained about it and nothing has changed. Isn't that a failure of the Environment Agency? Well, it's my understanding that this is under investigation, so it's not really appropriate for me to comment on an active investigation. Have those people who've complained nearly 200 times, have they been let down in the past, do you think? It's good that they're reporting it to us. That is what we would encourage the public to do. And we can only update people with limited information when an investigation is active. So the public just need to have confidence that we are dealing with th these things. And when we say it's under active investigation, it is. The Environment Agency is also responsible for licensing people who move waste in England. It's a chance to stop criminals and fly tipping. But there are few checks. All you have to do is apply online, pay a fee, and you're licensed. So let's test the system. We've got a tip-off about a licensed carrier who suspected of fly tipping. We've rented a lock-up garage in Harlow in Essex and filled it with rubbish for him to collect. This is Chris Poulter. He calls himself The Bear and advertises online for his company, Bear's Waste Disposal. We've got together some rubbish that's just a bit complicated to get rid of. So there's a gas bottle down here, mattress, a couple of fridges at the back. And we just want to see where this ends up. And to help us, we've got these. We've got some trackers that we can hide in this rubbish. So we can put one in the fridge, we can put one in this tyre down here. And they will show us where this rubbish ends up. And actually, just to be totally sure, if you look up here, cameras. It costs money to dispose of some of these items correctly. A responsible carrier would charge around £200. But Chris Poulter has agreed to do the whole job for £120. 100, 110. 120. So I'm, I'm, you know, genuinely impressed, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's fine. And you, you are licensed, aren't you? I didn't yeah, know you are. Yeah. I can send over my license details now. Fantastic. Or if you go even now, you can do a Google search. Go onto the gov.co.uk website and the waste management. Yeah. It will come up. Bears waste disposal. Right. It's true. His company is licensed to dispose of waste. So. Let's see if the bear does the right thing. We're trying to follow our rubbish in real time. Six trackers giving off a signal every couple of minutes. It does feel like now we're following the tracker because we're getting a straight line now through the countryside. By the evening, our trackers lead us deeper into the countryside. We did find the van, so the van transferred out of um, Essex up to Hertfordshire, and now they've moved again, and we think they're somewhere in these country lanes. we end up in an abandoned petrol station. So this is where we got a ping. But this is private property, so we can't search for our rubbish. It's two days later, and we think the rubbish has been dumped. I'm following the signal here of one of the trackers, and we think it's just up here. This is just off the A1 in Hertfordshire. Our trackers show the rubbish we gave to the bear was tipped here at 9.20 p.m. last night. There it is. There it is. That's our fridge. That's our tire. 
That is our insulation. This is the rubbish. This is the stuff that we handed over to a licensed waste collector. And it's just here. The tracker. This is our tracker. This is the insulation. This is our rubbish. It was supposed to be taken away, put somewhere safe, dealt with properly, and it's just been fly tipped. So, it looks like the bear really does dump in the woods. Our trackers have shown that licensing doesn't stop fly tipping. I think people might think, look, there's a million cases of fly tipping a year, and part of the reason might be the licensing process is a bit of a joke. There's lots of things that can reduce fly tipping and waste crime outside of the licensing system, and, and that's why instead of just looking at prosecutions or just looking at removing licenses, we have a whole range of tools, tools available to us to prevent crime, to disrupt crime. Um, so I think it's wider than just the licensing system. The government says licensing is being reformed. And the Environment Agency has been given extra funding and powers to deal with waste crime. Chris Poulter told us he stopped collecting waste. And he only took our job because someone else had offered to get rid of the rubbish for him. He says he's sorry it was dumped and he's never fly-tipped. But the law has been broken, and we're clearing up the mess. This is just one illegal tip out of the million a year. We all need to do more. So the Environment Agency have a role, but they need to be adequately resourced to do that role. Local authorities have a role, but we also have a role. And not to think, oh, isn't it terrible? But then that guy came round and he said he'd get rid of my old bathroom stuff for 50 quid. So that was all right, wasn't it? I am sick of standing by and seeing this stuff blight our towns, cities, and countryside. We need to do something, otherwise this country is just gonna be one huge skip. It is the national problem that's becoming a crisis. Poor regulation, erratic enforcement, and ruthless criminals are turning parts of the UK into open, illegal rubbish dumps.